Podcast, sponsored by Sinclair Heating and Cooling, for 24-7 comfort on call. Hello, Brad. Happy Monday. Thank you, Chris. Welcome, everybody at home. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's okay. story, I want to show everybody where it is before we discover more about it. Okay. You're looking at Google Maps. There is the state of California. Specifically, we're going to be talking about Central California. The earthquake today? Here, No, it was oh, a 4.3. Yeah, I saw right, it. Yeah. Uh, this is Stanislaus County. You can see it right there outlined in red. Okay. This is where today's story comes from. Okay, and this is what today's story is all about. They have built two of these structures at a price tag of $20 million. It's been 10 years in the making. Okay. What you are looking at is California's water energy project involving solar panels over these canals. Now, here's some background information that you need to know. California has 4,000 miles really? of canals. Yeah, okay. They service communities. Sure. For human need and they also are for irrigation okay okay precious water is lost to evaporation a lot of it chris if they could cover all of these canals with those solar panels they could save 63 billion gallons of water every year that's enough to meet the water needs of two million people okay. and or irrigate 50,000 acres of crops and listen i'm not going to lie I like my strawberries in the middle of winter, okay? <laughs> That's where they're coming from, you a got lot it. of them. Okay, so those are some of the uh, advantages of building these solar panels over the canals, but here are some other things, okay? Putting solar panels over water can help cool the panels, making them 20 to 50% more efficient ah. than land-based solar panels, which get extremely hot and therefore don't produce as much electricity. So there's okay. one big synergistic thing going on there, okay? Also, the solar panels over water canals curtail the growth of aquatic weeds, including algae, reducing canal maintenance, okay. so another good thing there. And then, this placement, of course, preserves undisturbed land. One of the big complaints about anti-solar people is you're using up valuable what could be farmland or sure. whatever. Well, this is a great place to put things like that because there's no... Because you can't put anything in the canal. Correct. It does look like kind of a high-tech boathouse. In a way, it does. Look, now you can oh, drive yeah. right in there, you see. <laughs> now, there's some other things going on here, too. Not, our, not just are the solar panels creating electricity, but they also include on-site battery storage. So if the state doesn't need the extra electricity for the moment, they can charge the batteries. And when the state needs more, or especially at night, they can discharge the batteries. So sure. they're harvesting and utilizing all of the electricity. And additionally, if all 4,000 miles of the canals were covered with solar panels, they could create 13 gigawatts of solar power, which is a lot of energy. So it's sort of a win, win, win except scenario. For that, except for that price tag. That is part of the problem. And again, this was just for these two, two sections. Correct. You yeah. know, and they're just test areas. I should mention that also in Phoenix, Arizona, or just north of Phoenix, I guess, they've also not the same company, but that community is it's also experimenting with the same thing. So it's probably an up and coming thing. But, you know, honestly, I know it's expensive initially, but, but it might it pay for itself later. Yeah, it seems to make sense. All right, Brad, yeah. thanks so much for okay. bringing that to our attention. Okay. That's what you get with three brilliant minutes. We'll see you again tomorrow. Okay. Still to come here, no matter how cool.